blacks, genetics, and the promotion of white supremacy. Population genetics is used to support white supremacy. Genetics is a biological science. Science is neutral. But when genetics is used to study the population history of Afro-Americans, it becomes another tool to promote white supremacy. Genetics research, like white people writing history, is used to control Afro-Americans and Africans, and is based on lies. Geneticists assume that you can discuss the genetic history of Afro-Americans and Africans as a simple case of admixture, resulting from the mixture of Africans, Europeans, and Native Americans since the transatlantic slave trade. This is false. These studies are false because Africans and Negroes have been in contact with Native Americans and whites for, or Europeans for thousands of years. As a result, ancestry of Afro-Americans cannot be neatly represented in a structure or admixture bar plot. Structure and admixture are programs used by geneticists to determine genetic admixture between two or more populations. The structure and admixture programs assume that trade, the transatlantic slave trade that is, marks the first contact between Europeans and Native Americans with West Africans. This theory assumes that this population lacked contact until after Columbus discovered America. This assumption of post-Columbus contact to make emphasis when comparing Afro-Americans to non-Africans that they assume correspond approximately to historical ancestry populations based on the alleged first contact between Europeans, Native Americans, and Africans during the transatlantic slave trade. As a result, genetic agnistra studies make it appear that Afro-Americans only carry mtDNA of the L macro haplogroup and the Y chromosomes carried by Africans are supposed to only include A, B, and E and that any other haplogroup group carried by Africans are the result of a back migration of Europeans into Sub-Saharan Africa. The results of administrative studies are invalid because the origin dates for the so-called European haplogroups are all before anatomically modern humans replaced Neanderthals in Europe and the Levant. So haplogroup L3, MN, and why haplogroup R originated in Africa and spread to Americas and Europe. They did not come back into Africa as a, as a back migration, as most geneticists teach. Genetics research is supposed to tell us population history. But genetics cannot tell us history because white people lie about the history of black and African people. Amos Wilson and in falsification of African consciousness, Eurocentric history, psychiatry, and the politics of white supremacy, discuss the lack of real awareness of black history can cause mental illness among blacks. Wilson wrote that whereas there aren't people to name a few, it is used by whites to dominate black people. Dr. Wilson adds that we must recognize the intimate relationship between culture and history and personality. If we do not know our history, then we do not know our personality. Dr. Wilson maintains that the European writing of history is in tandem with everything else European and its purpose is to ultimately the same, to maintain European power and domination. Population genetics is also used to support white supremacy. The structure dynamics programs are used by genetics to determine genetic admixture. The structure and admixture programs assume that the transatlantic slave trade marks the first contact between Africans and Europeans and Africans and Native Americans. This assumption of post-Columbus first contact with these populations
allow researchers to make inferences when comparing Afro-Americans to non-Afro-Americans. Researchers assume the sample populations due to first contact during the transatlantic slave trade correspond approximately to historical populations. Research studies based on this theory almost always have the same result. Afro-Americans are supposed to have partial European ancestry and a small fraction of Native American ancestry. In reality, these modeling programs cannot tell us anything about the genetic history of Afro-Americans because West, West Africans have been in contact with whites and Native Americans for thousands of years. Genetics research, like white people writing history, is used to control Afro-Americans and is based on lies. Europeans and West Africans have been in contact for 3,000 years. They first came in contact during the expansion of the people of the sea and later the Moors. The first contact between West Africans and Europeans was in Anatolia. Many other people living in West Africa today come from the Nile Valley or the ancient Ma civilization and some even came from the Levant. Yes, the Levant was formerly occupied mainly by black people, not white Arabs. In the Nile Valley, these uh, black people were called, belonged to the C group. The C group are the Kushite people of ancient history. After the decline of the Anu or Pygmy civilizations around the world between 4,000 to 3,500 BC due to a great flood that left Anu people on every continent and most islands in the Pacific and Indian Ocean. The Kushites created civilization from Iran up to China and India on up into Europe. After 1200 BC, Europeans began to migrate from Central Asia into Southern Europe and throughout the Mediterranean, all the way to the Delta region of Egypt. Beginning with the Hittites and people of the sea, Europeans began to mate with, with Africans. These Africans also mated with, with the Syrian white Arabs, who are descendants of the Gudians from Mesopotamian mountains mentioned in the Sumerian literature. While Greeks and Roman whites migrated from the Mediterranean up into France and Spain, the German-speaking tribes began to enter Western Europe at the 500 BC. Over the next thousand years, these Caucasians were mating and fighting with Sub-Saharan Africans who were already settled throughout Western Europe. By 600 AD, the Germanic and Greco-Romans had successfully subjugated the Black Europeans. These Caucasian supremacy remained constant in Central and Eastern Europe. But for much of Western European history, by the time by this time was characterized by blacks or sub-Saharan African Muslims who began to invade the country after the beginning of Islam. These black Muslims, often called Moors, took over many parts of Britain, France, and Syria. This picture of lesbian Portugal illustrates the numerous blacks in Europe by the time that Europeans were supposedly in control of Europe. The black Muslim rulers of Europe remained supreme until 1492 when Columbus discovered America. As a result of the original domination of Europe by the black Europeans and later the black Moors, there are probably no non-mixed Europeans. In fact, many of the Europeans today that carry genes that are also carried by Africans probably acquired these genes from Africans. Because as we know, most people will show the most recent addition of genes to their genetic history. There were also black Native Americans when Columbus arrived in the Americas. Yes, black Native Americans. These black Native Americans were living, and many of them were Aztecs, Mayas, Yoruas, and other black people. The first settlers of Brazil came from Africa 100,000 years ago. After the reconstruction of the Paleo-Americans, Luzia and Naia, we can see that this population was Negroid, African, Australian, or Melanesian. The Sub-Saharan Africans and Negroes have been settling the Americas for thousands of years. The last great immigration of Sub-Saharan Negroes into the Americas was the followers of Abu Bakari of the ancient Mali Empire. When Abu Bakari came to the Americas in 1310, 
there was probably as many as 25,000 Malians who came to the Americas with him. These people came in Malian boats. These Malians left many mounds throughout the United States and inscriptions. These inscriptions that the Malians left us is written in the Vai writing. Many people, because the Vai writing looks like Punic writing, have assumed that these writings or inscriptions represent ancient Phoenician scripts, but they are not. These scripts were left by the Malians, led by Abu Bakari. The African origin of the Paleo-Americans make it clear that many so-called Native American genes are African genes because the Aboriginal Americans were Negroes or Sub-Saharan Africans. As a result, many Native American genes like mtDNA haplogroups M, A, and X, and Y chromosome R1 are of African origin. They do not reflect the mixture with Europeans. They reflect a mention of the Mongoloid Indians after they came to Americas who made it with the Africans who were the Aboriginal population of the Americas. As a result, there are no pure non-mixed ancestral Native American population. Because Mongoloid Native Americans have been mating with Negroes from Africa since they first began to migrate into the Americas 6,000 years ago. Yes, the first skeletons of Mongoloid Indians, the Indians that who people consider to be Native Americans today, do not appear in the archaeological history of the Americas until 6,000 years ago. Finally, genetic admixture studies make it appear that Afro-Americans only carry empty DNA of the L macro haplogroup. And the Y chromosomes carried by Africans are supposed to be only A, B, and E. And that any other haplogroups carried by Africans are the result of a back migration of Europeans into Sub-Saharan Africa. But as you can see, Africans and Europeans and Africans and Native Americans have been Maybe for thousands of years. You see, the results of these administrative studies are also invalid because the origin date for the so-called European haplogroups are all before anatomically modern humans replaced Neanderthals in Europe and the Levant. If these so-called haplogroups originated before anatomically modern humans replaced Neanderthals in Europe, that means that the people, those black people who settled Europe in ancient times, had to have taken these haplogroups or genes into Europe and it was later in a sense the Europeans who acquired these genes, not, to, not Africans. Scholars know that black people and white people were in contact before 1492 when Columbus discovered the New World, but they create a lie to keep us ignorant about our past. In summary, population genetics lacks a foundation because Africans have been in contact with Native Americans and Europeans for thousands of years before Columbus found America. This means two things. This means one, the Native Americans and Europeans do not approximate historical ancestral populations. Secondly, the discovery of mtDNA haplogroups M, N, and U, and Y chromosome R among Africans do not represent a back migration because Europeans probably acquired this haplogroup from Africa thousands of years before Columbus arrived in the New World. Sadly, genetics are a science, but genetics is being used today by many scholars and researchers to create a lie about African people, a lie about black people. Black people carried these genes. White people acquired the genes they carry today from their mating and mixture with African people just like Native Americans. Genetics support white supremacy.